Hey there, Boots Owen here. This is the Big Mila Professional in my cellar, WS5073 Sluice. There's another washing machine on in the background, the Samsung, so that's what's making the other noise. This machine has had a number of repairs. I've repaired this hose a bit. I've repaired the sump hoses, or cleaned them, put them back together with new clips. But one of the other jobs before I put it back together was the motor. And I've had great success repairing WFF1401 Bosch bearings, motor bearings recently and uh, spurred on by that I think I'm going to have a go at the bearings on this and I was looking at it and I got the wire brush out there's a Torx screw on the end so I suspect this pulley is screwed on and may come off a lot easier than I was expecting so it's held on with a screw over here and I think a long screw going the whole way through there Maybe just two screws, so if we pull the belt off, if I can. Yeah, there we go. The belt looks particularly ratty. And I guess I could get a new belt quite easily. It's a six poly V belt uh, with a Mila number on it, I think. Which means it'll be expensive. Yeah, 6PJ4806490, 1600 Mila. I presume 1600 means it's a six poly V, 1600 long. The bearings are ropey at best. This uh, this pulley is quite sharp, you know. Okay, I'll get a 13 mil spanner by the looks of things and just unscrew it. And then I'll bring it out to the garage workshop where all my tools are. So coming at the motor from the other side, there was a screw down here and a screw up there holding this plastic cover on. I think it just kind of clips off and then I've got to release this connector block there's at least two tab at least one tab on I can see one I should, yeah, I should pull off and I don't know what we're stuck on over there just a rubber a rubber pin so that's the cover off it's a bit of dust it's quite a small motor it doesn't have brushes by the looks of things it appears to be some kind of an induction motor maybe I might be wrong I'll have a look so two screws should get it off I think very easy So I'm on the ever crowded bench, MXT 10 66 slash 2, tile 4111553, number 0, uh, 0215045200, 300 to 19,000 uh, per revs, per revs per minute. I S K I F, don't know what they mean. It's not a brushed motor. So it must be some kind of an induction motor, maybe three phase. The laminations there have a bit of a flick on them. See, don't know what that's about. I've got to get this pulley off uh, before or after. So I'll try, I'll just try hitting it with the impact driver right now. I think I haven't got any, I haven't got any good impact, impact bits for something like this, but uh, well, I'll just use what I've got because that's what we're going to do. There's some stuff in it. Uh, not much actually. But it would help to clean it a bit first, so I'll do that. I have an enormous selection of cheap bits that I have found in various toolboxes along the way. That feels loose. What's that? 40, is it? Maybe 45? Mm, don't know, that feels a bit better, but not 100%. Well, we'll see what happens. Let's let's rattle it a bit. In, in there like that somehow. Don't really want to fit, but it's not really the issue. There we go. No, that's not it. Let's see if that does it. Right. Wow, let's have a look at the bit. See, these cheap bits, they've twisted. The bit has twisted from use and there's a bit of thread locker on there. So I need to bear that in mind. Now, that doesn't mean that this is just gonna fall off, does it? But um, I'm gonna have to take this off before that. So I'm gonna use the big splitters, I think. Don't know if I need to apply heat. Now I need to save this somehow. So if I put that back in, 
this isn't going to be great. This is where it all goes wrong because you put so much force on trying to get it off that you end up squeezing the threads down below. So it's only on about, what's that, about 10 mil of attachment. There's a lot of stuff going on in the background. I think what I'm going to do is if I can get this one on it, I'll put a socket in. Yeah, this one might, oh, this will do nicely, I'd say. This is an enormous puller. It's ideal because it's strong. <laughs> if I could get a socket that would fit in there. 10 mils too big. An 8 mil socket, would that fit? No. I don't want to wreck my sockets, but let's give it a go. And I also don't want to squeeze this in, so I just want to see if this will break the seal on it. So I'm trying to find something that will not get stuck. It's a bit too loose. It might do it though. So a little turning off cut will fit loose but perfect in there. So that's ideal now. And that should sit up into the head here as well. We might just be in luck here. It's very difficult to get a sense of what I'm doing because there's so much other stuff going on in and around the workbench here. It's not, it's not quite tight on there yet. I'd like to loosen that back a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Okay. That's as loose as I can make it. So I need to take a little bit more off the slug. So I've got it. it, should fit now. Hopefully this will all just work swimmingly. Bring up the pressure on there. I'm trying to keep it straight. If what looks straight to me is a bit wonky. Now well, one leg isn't quite attached yet. Well, hmm, that's just how it is, I guess. Yeah, it's on, it's on pretty good. <laughs> right, mummy bar time. One leg isn't on right, I'm gonna have to sort that out. I'm using it at the lower limit of what it, its capacity is, so it's not really gripping correctly. It might be better, is it? If I just hold it in place. No, this one one side doesn't want to doesn't want to grip in the same way as all the others. I'll try it like that. That was it. That was quite easy. Bit of force does the trick. Pulley is off. That was quite uh, unspectacular. A bit of damage to the pulley. Slight bit of damage to the pulley, but not to the running tracks of it, so it'll be okay. Very good. This is all going very well. It's unusually successful. So there's a slight taper on that, and that's what, what it sits up on once it's screwed down. Cool. So it should just be a matter now of taking out these screws, pulling the motor apart and getting the bearings out. Sounds very easy, doesn't it? Let's put a mark on it so that it lines up. I'll put one here just so that I know where I'm putting it back together again. Mm, not so bad. You've got to be careful to bring these up equally and let them off equally because you could snap one of the snap one of the lugs off and you wouldn't be any further forward there. If you tightened one completely and then tried to pull the other one in, you need to kind of bring them up in succession. The same with releasing them. I don't know if I've made that made sense there at all. You've got to balance the application of force when you're tightening them up and releasing them. Is that right? Pressure, force. Okay, we're nearly there. I've decided to leave this bit on. I could have taken it off, but it doesn't matter. Four screws. They look thinner than the Bosch ones. Now, the Taco one all seems to be in this end. And... I hope it doesn't have to come off. Let's see if we can get this end off first. Use the big screwdriver. I'm not entirely sure what it's... Oh, it's loose now. Whoa, come back. Oh, that's it. The rotor's coming with this end. That's fine with me. 
there is no spring washer at the back. There is an encoder ring there, which I need to take off carefully. But, mm, too tight. There we go. Don't know why that's tight. But it surely is. All right, T25. Oh dear, that's that's what happens there. This machine's fucked. You see what happened? The screw sheared. Oh, bollocks. The magnet's broken. It might still be magnetic enough, like it is. It is. Ah oh, dear, so what happened there? The screw sheared. I don't think that was anything to do with the impact driver, I think that was more to do with the hand driver. It's just going to shear. It's got, I can see blue in there, so it's been bonded in. Uh, it should be so easy. I think this is still okay if I could drill that out. I'm, it was all going so well. Right, does this come out of here then? Oh well, this is where we are. That's that. Okay, and there is a spring washer in there. So let's set those aside. In a great heap. 6202Z. Oh, look at that. The back one's all right, but there's no point in doing one and not the other. It's a real shame because I'm not going to get another one. That's for sure. I'm not really willing to pay much for anything on this machine. So, like, if I'm putting new bearings on it, I will pay £3 or whatever these bearings will cost, £3 each. I'll pay that much. Yeah, it's just cracking off. That's cool. But I won't pay 50 quid. I won't get a new motor for 50 quid. I won't pay 100 quid for a new motor, whatever it would cost. That ain't gonna fit. I think the big fellow might do it. Okay, I think with this one it should just pull off quite quickly because it's such a big pullers compared to the other one. I've not got it on right again. I haven't got much travel on this machine. I've only got about a quarter inch left, but it's maybe it'll be enough. coming off quite handy there. I just ran out of travel before. That's it, good. So 6202. 6202, I better order some more of them then. The other thing I thought was, well, I could just re-grease them. That would, that would calm it down a bit. Which one is it? Yeah, that one. I could re-grease it, put a little tiny hole. Well, in theory, you can snap out those rings. I have a bigger bearing here from the Bosch machine, another NSK. So the bearings are within those cages inside and they rotate. And that's just a grease cover. That's the ZZ shield. And if it was an RS shield, it would be rubber and the rubber ones are easier to get out and put back in. So let's see if I can drill this out somehow. So it's mounted in the vise. I'll pop it with a little punch in what I hope is the center. That looks okay. That's through the bolt. That's easy. I wonder would an extractor take it out now? This is a little screw extractor. It's very small. Like when you're typically when you're dealing with these things, the bigger ones are easier to get out. The small ones. Like someone might say penetrating oil or that, that doesn't make any odds as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it's turning. Wow, this is quite amazing. I wonder why it sheared. I don't know that I've ever had success like this before with some one of these screw extractors. I've, I don't know why. Maybe the heat freed up the um the blue compound. Thread locker. Don't know. Okay, so a few days have passed and the post has been. And I got these 6202Zs made by NTN. They're, they were the cheapest ones I could get that were branded. They've got a little, tiny bit of surface rust on them and stuff. I've never seen the coding written on the outside, but uh, there you go. C3. I don't know if that's the one I want, actually. So compared to the old ones, they're uh, a dream. So let's put those there. I've got to figure out now how to get these onto the shaft. I also found a screw there. Uh, 
So what did I do with the other machine before when I did the Bosch one? A little bit of grease, and I'm gonna need some thread locker as well. Okay, a tiny smear of just any old grease, tiniest, tiniest little bit, just to help these bearings ease on. Put it the whole way around. Somebody commented on the Bosch video where I did the bearings in the Bosch washing machine recently that I look like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's a surprise, <laughs> surprise to me. Okay, there's one bearing on. Let's push it in. This is a big woodworking vise. I think this one might fit in my metalworking vise, but I'm not too fussed about it. That's it. Put the old bearing in place there and I'll just squeeze it up a bit more. Right, it won't go any further on that side, so I hope I haven't gone too far. So the other end's a bit trickier, because I don't know if it has to go here or here. So I'll push it to here, where there's a rust line, and then I'll bring it back to try it in the motor frame just to see. Because if I push it in too far, it'll be loose, and that won't do. So this time I've got the old bearing and the socket to push it in. We're going off center there, so I need to line it up a bit better. That's it, it's going in. Oh, I've got it lined up great, actually. So what would be excellent for me is a bearing press, a workshop bench bearing press, or floor standing even would be good. But uh, they cost money, you see, and uh, they get used very little, generally speaking. So that might that might be right. So I haven't refitted the magnetic encoder, it's just there. Not encoder, but, you know, magnet. Come on in, bearing. Normally these fit. There you go, quite easily. Now, there was an upside there it is, over here. So there's a spring washer in there, need to remember. Yeah, it's got to go a good way more. Okay, this time I've got a couple of long sockets, which I'm hoping they'll do nicely, but I'm hoping they won't snug up on the, on the shaft. loose. We're not pushing on something there, something's not right. I think it's pushing against the shoulder. What's the next size up? Was that 15? 14, we'll try 15. You can tell that it's not giving that's up against something solid, which is kind of weird. There we go. So I wonder if it's meant to go to there, or, or is it meant to go further? I see there's still a little gap, so I'll try that and we'll see. So it would seem that it needs to go that little bit more to there. And that's it. So let's do what we can to reassemble this. This should drop straight in. And then with the spring washer in place, this should go on. And I've got my marks, if I can remember which way around they go. So if that spring washer falls off, you've got to put it back on. I think that's got it. I think we're pretty good to go there if I tighten that up. That spins okay. So let's put the screws in and tighten them up. Okay. Ah, don't do that. Take it out and put the encoder on the end. So we're going to be back to where we were a minute ago if we don't. It's not an encoder, it's just a magnet. So, I broke the edges off it. You saw that at the start of the video. I can't glue them back on. Maybe I could. So I'm just going to have to put this on. It'll still sit, it'll still have its outside edge. Hopefully it has enough magnetism left in it to do the trick. Don't fall over, don't fall over. Thread locker. Somebody questioned um, what that was in the last video. Well, it just locks the thread up. Stops the screw falling out. Not sure it's great to get on your fingers. You don't need very much. A bottle lasts forever and doesn't cost very much. It costs a lot. When you're doing jobs like this, the first time you do them, everything seems to cost a fortune. But then you have it forever in the cupboard. It's not a Phillips screwdriver or a posi screwdriver. Let's get the correct one. How tight do you tighten it? Hmm. 
that tight. I'm scared to tighten it too tight. And if it falls apart, I've lost five pounds in the bearings and two pounds in the washing machine. There's a bit of fluff in the bottom I can see down there that won't affect it, but I'm gonna blow it out with the compressed air for no particular reason. But it makes it nice and clean. All right. Once again, I'm glad I remembered that this time because I'm, it's typical of me to put things like that back together and forget those things. Right, so it's easy to line up the rubber here with the rubber down there and the spring washer and everything else. So much going on. Spring washer. Okay. That's it. Sounds okay. I'm gonna flip it over, line it up and flip it over because the screws go in from the other side. And these are Torx. I think I took them out by hand. See, when you're watching the video, this will all be completely obvious to you. But if you're making the video, you've been away for a week or three or four days. I can't remember. It's been about three or four days that this has been sitting in a basin beside the bench. So don't over tighten one and then come around and do the rest. Put the two diagonals in and kind of balance them up you could do it with a tape measure or a ruler if you wanted to get it perfect. But if you tighten one down completely and then try the other, tighten up the other, you might snap one of the lugs off, especially when they're just little lugs like this. Uh, the same is true of, you know, you could, or you could just bend it and that wouldn't maybe matter as much, but a fracture in this case, you know, these motors aren't cheap if you can even get them. So you don't want to do that, is the short answer. So try and get them all in and then bring up the, the torque on the screws somewhat equally, I guess. But you're still doing it by hand. You're not going to get a torque wrench out for this kind of operation. So there we go, four in. I'll do this one now a bit tighter. Then it's diagonal opposite. Then a buddy here that's gone loose now, you see. And then this one down here, which should also be a bit loose. No, it's you see, it's gone tight. I'll go back there and go back over here, go diagonally. This is enough really at this point. So I've got my magnetic ring in there now and it might work or it might not. I won't know until I put it in the machine. I might just initially overspeed and then give a motor error, which I'm kind of fretting, but I can't do much about it. Then there's this fellow. This is the pulley, razor sharp. I've marred it a bit there, but I don't think that matters. You can see where it bears on the tapered shaft here bit of silver on it so put that on it beds okay it doesn't have any kind of key or anything and then i'll put some thread locker on this mostly because i could see blue on it thread locker and these loctite some of these loctite compounds are quite interesting they set in the absence of air so i need a bigger one so when there's oh, there's the impact driver socket screw i saw it there somewhere there it is so when there's air they stay liquid. For instance, is that the right size? No. So when they're in the bottle, the bottle is porous enough that the air can go through the sauce and uh, that's gonna hurt my fingy now. Oh, is it going in the wrong way? No. It's just spinning the shaft beneath. I need to do it by hand, I guess, to get it going and then try and rattle it. I think I put the vice grips on there as well, so. Yeah, so it won't set in the bottle where there is air, which is counterintuitive, but it will set between two pieces of metal where there's no air. That's not tight enough again. Let's see if this does it. struggle here to torque this up correctly because I don't really know what we're aiming for. I don't think I'm going to get any tighter. I'll try one little rattle more. Just taking off the inside of the screw now. I guess that's a safety feature. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, it's going to be a pleasure to release if uh, if needs be. I think it's, I think I used, <sighs> I think I used too small a screwdriver. I said, what did I say? 30. What was the next one up? 40? Yeah, try 40 on it. It did fit after all. Yeah, it's tight enough. The long and the short of it is, if this, if the motor's not working because of the magnet anyway, I'm kind of in a bit of a pickle. So, fingers crossed.
So the motor's back in and its cover is on. The big bolt goes through there and comes out over here. The other screw goes in there. You put the belt on. This one's, it's seen better days, but it's the one I have and I just want to play with the machine. I don't really want to make it perfect. When I spin this, it sounds pretty good down here. So it does. Let's give it a spin. So a separate spin would be G. Let's give that a go. Nothing will happen with the door open. I noticed that there was like gobs of, you can see it in there actually still, gobs of something, probably laundry soap. I was using a pin to poke them out. Just like that. And uh, nothing much will happen on this cycle because there shouldn't be any water, but in the future that might make a difference. Might make some noise. Gotta bang it. Light comes on. I want to set it to G. Mm, G. So that's H G. It's a bit of play in the old switch there. Oh, it's doing that stupid number thing again. Oh, bummer. It's not gonna do it, is it? It's done this. It's doing that before. Okay, caught it that time. Don't know what that number thing's about because this machine doesn't have the time delay feature. Other machines have another set of buttons here or over here for the time delay. It started turning, saw it there a second ago. The bits of noise are the stuff in the machine now, which is not gonna help. And there's no brushes. I haven't replaced them like I did on the Bosch machine. And when you replace the brushes, they make noise. This is sounding good. I can't imagine it'll take six minutes. The other thing I didn't pay attention to is that this has opened. And so the sump should have dropped. See, it slides over to the right there. Let's have a look at the back. six minutes that is what I'm talking about that sounds great much better five pound job <laughs> It's definitely working and I'm definitely really pleased with that. I'm quite, quite happy with that, a bit smug maybe. I was just looking at this boss while I was admiring the machine at work. It's massive. The pairings in there are probably pretty, pretty chunky. They're probably quite expensive even just to buy generic ones to replace it. But they're not making noise so I'm silently quite pleased, maybe vocally, quite pleased with this machine. Okay, what else can I say? If you like this video, Tell me about it below with the thumbs up if it was helpful. Maybe super thanks is the thing for you. Or there's other methods to do that down in the video description. Sub into the channel, it'd be appreciated as much as would a like. And any questions or comments, drop them below. Maybe I said that already. Thanks for watching. See you later.